All right, Shabbat Shalom, Shalom Rastafari, Salam Tana, Aina Yistadling, Senbet Salah. This book right here is called The Black Jews of Harlem. And I've referenced this particular book before, The Black Jews of Harlem, by Howard M. Broats. Broats. It might be a little difficult to find, you know, but um, we was able to find a copy, The Black Jews of Harlem. Very, very interesting um, book right here. Negro Nationalism and the Dilemmas of Negro Leadership. You see it right there. Right? And this is uh, from a section, Source Books in Negro History. All right? Now, this particular book I reference, and you can go to, uh, you can check it out on Wikipedia. I think it's um, the Black Jews, African American Israelites. Um, it's kind of classified in one of those subsections. Uh, don't recall right now, I think it's African American Jews or Israelites, black Hebrews. I think it's under black Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrews or Hebrew Israelites, right? And you'll find a uh, history, a brief uh, history of, um, for lack of a better word, the movement of Ethiopian Hebrews or black Jews, right? So this is a part of our um, hidden um, legacy or it hasn't been stolen so much, but it's been hidden from us. Others have just been taking it because it's a good thing. They know what it, what it means to them, right? And in the divine, um, in the divine mind, God's mind, they're not supposed to tell us who we be. We're supposed to recognize who we be. We're supposed to hear hear the the voice of one calling in the wilderness, as it were, right? To repent. Right, we're supposed to um, hear the words of the great shepherd, right, of uh, Yeshua, the Moshiach. So we don't say we want Moshiach now. We say we have Moshiach now. If we know the half of the story that hasn't been told to us, so this particular book is, I think, very important in in that um, search and um, reclamation of the half of the story that hasn't really been told and been suppressed until now, right? Because now is the time. Now today is the acceptable day of salvation. Now, this particular book, um, let's see if we can go right here. Some of the chapters in this particular book are interesting. It has a couple of illustrations. Um, the world of commandment keepers. Now, the commandment keepers, the congregation known as the commandment keepers, from which this book, Black Jews of Harlem, basically gets its uh, title, um, was founded by uh, Rabbi uh, Rebbe Wentworth Arthur Matthews. Now, sometimes when I say, okay, we have a black rabbi, we have black rabbis, and there's this um, um, famous black rabbi, for us who know him, he has a shim, shim mode, he has a name, so he's famous amongst us. You know, but he's unknown among others. But once you get to know the half of the story, you recognize this is a very important man right here. And we're showing you some of the. This book was actually written in uh, sixty, published in sixty three. It's published in nineteen sixty three. Now let me just show you this right here, so you'll see now why that's important. Well, because uh, twenty thirteen is a jubilee year for us. It's actually 200 years since the um, Emancipation uh, Proclamation, since liberty was proclaimed. But it wasn't just proclaimed like we didn't do anything for it. We, we fought, we bled, uh, we, we died, right? Blood, sweat, and tears were shed for our liberty by us, by we black people, so-called Negroes, um, Lord Sheep of the House of Israel, Beta Israel, we the Falashas, we are Falashas, Falashim, we're exile, we're in exile in the diaspora here in the West. So, you see that right there? Uh, June 1963, right? June 1963, you see it right there, right? June 1963. Now, let's see when, when it was uh, published. They said first printed, right, in 64, but you see from the preface 
to the 1970 edition, it says 1963. So I'm just putting that um, forward because that's in the timeline. I like to go through some more of this, you know, actually page by page. And this is also um, work for other brothers and sisters, right, who, who are responsible, who respond to that call of our culture and our heritage to do all in their power to um, proclaim the good news. This is our gospel, right? This is the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. This is actually the foundation. Negro, you see what it says right there, Negro is the name of a thing. And it says, um, black Jews contend, we, the black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, contend that the so-called Negroes in America are really Ethiopian Hebrews or Falashas who have been stripped of their knowledge of their name and religion or spirituality, you can say, during slavery or enslavement. Because we were never Slav. Slav is a European name and title that was put on us when Slick Willie stripped us 301 years ago, right? 1712, 300 years, 2012, the end of their world system, right? White supremacy. Now, the term Negro, they further contend, we further contend, is a word invented by the Slav masters and imposed upon the enslaved together with the white man's religion in order to demoralize them, confuse us, Babylon means confusion, and they did this by instilling in the enslaved the view that they had no gods, no ancestors, no principles of right and wrong or ma'at, and nothing worthwhile of their own. All right, so this is just like a, a intro right here. Now, I think there's some pictures in this particular book, right, that we can highlight. All right, as you can see right here, some of the some of the pictures in this particular book right here. This is Rabbi William being given his priestly charge by Rabbi Matthew. That's uh, Rabbi Matthew right there. All right, Wentworth Arthur Matthew. All right, and then you can let's see if we can. Uh, uh, that's him right there. All right, that is um, the ordination of Rabbi James. William by Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew right there. Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew. All right. And then you can see right there that is Elder Harold Gray from Youngstown, um, Ohio, delivering a lecture, like a Devar Torah. Right. And you see the black youths, the children. This is, the, uh, I think, maybe a synagogue or a yeshiva right there. All right. Just so you can see some of that. Okay, and we're touching on this because we want to touch on the teaching of uh, a rabbi, rabbi, um, to rabbi, uh, you know, to, to be rabbi or not to be rabbi. And that's the question that we're going to address in this uh, Rastafari Rebbe series. Now, this is interesting because this is actually Rabbi Matthew Small and William coming from the Harlem River after Tashlik, after the Tashlik uh, ceremony on Rosh Hashanah, right, coming from the Harlem River, right, and you see the brother there, our elder, right, this is the real black, um, you could say, church, or the the Beta Meshahawiyan, right, the Beta Christian, in, in the true sense, not the whitewashed gentle sense. Um, Rabbi Small, far left, with the elders of the congregation, right? There's uh, a Rabbi uh, Matthew with graduates of the Hebrew school and, el and elders. And you see him, he's over here in white right there, right? Here is uh, uh, a Rabbi Matthews addressing the graduates. Right, he's addressing the graduates right there, right? And uh, this is Rabbi uh, Maketan, 
All right, my cat's in a representative of the Brooklyn, of the Brooklyn group. All right, the Brooklyn group, and you can see uh, Rabbi Matthew Matewos Matthew right there. And let's go through this. Just a couple more pictures right here. All right, think about ten, twelve, twelve pictures. Okay, this is um, this is the yeah. congregation. All right, this is the congregation right here attending Hebrew graduation school, right? Hebrew graduation school. This is like 40, 40 years ago. We could say about 40, 40 years ago, right? 40 years ago. Now, when we put this in context with the Hebrew Torah and the Hebrew book of Exodus and the prophetic, right? When we put this into context with the prophetic, and this is 40 years later, well, <laughs> that brings front and center the 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 true overstanding, right? The, the, the basic understanding, but a true overstanding in order to overcome this hell and holocaust and black genocide. This holocaust, we're going through a period of a holocaust or a black genocide, right? Um, just like the Israelites, in a sense, went through in the wilderness, but much worse. In, in this present time, because we should have the example, right, of the scriptures. Those in the wilderness didn't have that particular example, right? But anyway, this is uh, the congregation right here. One would think on a level it's church, but yes, this is the real church. This is the true church of the firstborn, right? This is the true church of the firstborn, right? So we can see that, that um you know, that, that, that picture right there. You know, this is evidence because folks will try to say, like, let's see right here. This is, uh, um, okay, two pictures down here. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you this picture right here. So this is um, Rabbi Small and uh, Matthew pose with uh, cake commemorating Matthew's uh, 74th birthday and the 50th anniversary of the Commandment Keepers Congregation, right, of the Commandment Keepers Congregation. So here yeah, they were for, for a cake, a, commem a commemoration, right? Then we have over here this particular picture right here, um, a Commandment Keeper from Jamaica, right, from Jamaica. So it's not just I and I Yankee, so-called, but it's also the Yadi. It's not just I and I Judahite, right? So called Negro in the Americas, but it's also the Binyamite. Right? Just so this is the foundation of our unity. Right? This is the foundation of our unity right here. So we have a commandment keeper from Jamaica, um, Rabbi Small, Mrs. Uh, Matthew, the wife of Rabbi Matthew or Rabbi Mateos, and all attending the fiftieth anniversary celebration right here now this is one for the ages you know this is really one for the ages and there's so much within the text that we would love to um touch on we're going to see if we can even try to find a scan of this book you know so we can put up a pdf uh, version of it now this is the this is the true foundation, right? This is the true foundation when we start to talk about black Hebrews or Hebrew Israelites. And unfortunately, many of the um, Hebrew Israelites, certain camps of Hebrew Israelite, are are cut off or have cut them off from the from their true roots. So when we're talking about we as Ethiopian and Hebrew, and certain uh, black Hebrews or Israelites. Um, having a misunderstanding or miseducation, they need to connect, you know, with their roots and with this hidden truth right here, right? This is basically where it started off from, right? There were, you, you wouldn't be no black Hebrew or Hebrew Israelite today without our forefathers, you, we could say the patriarchs and the matriarchs who went through blood, um, sweat, and tears to lay down this particular foundation, so when we say that we're Ethiopian and Ethiopian Hebrews, right, know your roots, know your truth, know the half of the story that hasn't been told until now. 
So this is this is Wendem, and uh, we can say even Rabbi Yadin Yadinos in this capacity of the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. Shalom Rastafari Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> 